Out here in the Komodo National Park, I've come looking for reptiles, giant geckos, pit vipers, pythons, and here, giant dragons are still roaming the wild. Largest lizards on the planet, and we're right there, face to face with them. On this adventure, I take you on a journey through wild islands where people live alongside prehistoric predators, and where every shadow might hide a dragon. The only way to explore Komodo National Park is by boat. On this adventure, we will be sailing around the volcanic islands here, spanning 1,700 square kilometers. First up, we're heading to meet with the local communities who live side by side with Komodo dragons. We're arriving at Rinka village at the heart of the Komodo National Park. I'm gonna try and work out what it's like to live with Komodo dragons. About 3,000 people live in the park. Thank you. In traditional fishing villages like this one. To help locate the dragons in the wild, I'll be joined by local rangers, Renus and Chepi. Now, look at how many different animals are around here. You've got little kittens, goats, Komodo dragons certainly would take advantage of that. The only thing that's stopping these domestic animals from being preyed upon is a fence line bordering the village with the outside forest, keeping villagers, their pets and livestock safe from dragons. Hey, Komodo big. That is huge. That's crazy, it almost looks like a rock. This is massive. Now you can see why they put this fence up. Komodo dragons, they've got amazing sense of smell, so they've got that big forked tongue and it's actually centered down here thinking that there's food to get to that found this gate. But this is a totally wild Komodo dragon. Next up, I wanted to get to the other side of a fence line to see if we can go find one out there in the wild to come face to face with a wild dragon. It's a monkey right there. Long tail macaque. Whoa, check that out. That's the Komodo dragon feces, and you can see what it's been eating. That is the leftover of a deer, the fur. Incredible. So, we're in the right track. There's Komodo dragons around here. Of course we are, we're in the right habitat and the right place. Let's keep looking, see if we can find one out in the wild. In their natural habitat, Komodo dragons live in this mosaic of open savannas and dry tropical forest. Much of the landscape is hilly and rugged with rocky volcanic terrain. With so much still to learn about dragons in their territories, I wondered if this cave could be home to dragons. Look here, there's a Komodo dragon's trail. That's the tail that's been dragging along the floor. So we know that the Komodo dragon's been using this cave for either shelter or for food. But I don't know where he is. It's not in here, it might be further in here. I'm gonna have a quick look through this cave, but maybe I'll come back later tonight. Maybe that he comes in at dusk time for a shelter, to sleep. Fruit bats. It's these bats in this cave that kind of provide food, the snakes, which then is part of a food chain, which in turn becomes food for the Komodo dragons. To try and discover more about the life of Komodo dragons here, the best way is with a remote motion camera. So I place one at the entrance. Right, that's perfect, that's set. So we've got the camera, it's pointing in this direction. The cave entrance is there, and it looks like a Komodo dragons might be using this trail to go into the cave in order to hunt their bats. Anyway, let's, fingers crossed, this will get some action on there. We'll leave it here for a week and then come back later. It's also not well known the habits of dragons at night. So once dusk sets in, we kept up our active search around here to see what's out and about. Check that out. That is the biggest tailless whip scorpion I've ever seen. Absolutely alien looking creatures. Oop.
don't know why they kind of scare me, but this is neither a spider nor a scorpion, as you call a tailless whip scorpion. It's a type of arachnid, but it's not venomous. All right, mate, happy hunting. I'll put you back down there. Off you go. Right here is a Komodo dragon. A large Komodo dragon, so we have to be careful. He's woken up, so he's now deciding to move out of the way. Incredible encounter. There you go, Komodo dragon. So we saw one today just outside of a fence. We've now just gone round to see what other animals out and about at night. So that Komodo is actually resting around here. We'd better not disturb her or him too much or we'll head off on our way. We've now arrived at this incredible island in Komodo National Park. We're going to be heading onto this island later this morning and then onto Komodo Island to see if we can encounter Komodo Dragon out in the wild. First off, I meet up with a local of this village to help on this island. My name is Sahril. I am a local guide here. The of the dragons will be staged around the village. Okay. And just like on Rinkit Island, the villagers here also live alongside dragons. But here, there's no fence for protection. There you go, so that's our first Komodo dragon. And he's sitting in the shade. It's actually still a morning, but extremely hot. But you can see all these goats grazing around the side of the village. Komodo dragons, they're opportunistic predators. And what they do, they lay in waiting and hope that prey comes close to them. And in this case, actually domestic goats and then they can run up to 20 kilometers an hour and then catch that goat. So this is what's happening right now, that you've got Komodo dragons living outside of the village where they're actually picking off some of the domestic animals, including the goats. And then there are others outside of the village. Outside of them, it's more. We headed further into the surrounding forest to encounter dragons on the move. But first, Saril has spotted a snake also out hunting. We like snakes. Woo! <laughs> this is a bronze back diurnal snake. You can see how quick and whippy they are. So these guys are out during the day, Ooh, foraging amongst the foliage. Extreme, oh, <laughs> he just bit me. <laughs> Non-venomous snake. And uh, they're actually related to some of the tree snakes you see in Australia. I'm gonna release him back into his tree so he can happily go off hunting again. Thanks, mate. <laughs> See you later. All right, we have a Komodo dragon over here on the trail. Oh. Wow. Okay, wow, look at that tongue going in and out. <laughs> He's sensing where we, where we are. <laughs> Whoa, luckily we've got Sariel. He's got this stick because these dragons, when they catch a scent, they can come towards you and sometimes can attack. But this one is a little bit used to people, so it's not the first time he's seen somebody. But look at the size of this dragon. Komodo dragons can get up to 80 kilograms in weight. Absolute giants of the jungle. That was a bit of an adrenaline rush. 50, 60 kilogram dragon right there coming right towards us. And they have actually attacked people. The teeth on those dragons are gigantic and they certainly would cause a lot of damage. They can actually feed up to 80% of their entire body weight in one sitting. And that's really one of the adap adaptations of the Komodo dragon that they can actually devour their prey and eat so much in one sitting that they maybe only need to eat once a month. 
It is really an absolute dinosaur. Oh, it's coming towards us. So this will be probably a, a large male. And the males, they will be following during the breeding season the scent of the female in their feces. And that animal there is built to be able to fight other males. And so during that breeding season, sometimes you'll see two males in combat. Once they have mated, the females will lay up to 20 eggs. Oh. Okay, look. There's another Komodo dragon coming in in the background there. This is absolutely unreal. We're here in modern day Jurassic Park. Got the largest lizards on the planet and we're right there face to face with them. This is unbelievable. They really are nothing like any other lizard that you'll see. I mean, they're related, of course, they're, they're monitor lizards, they're related to the monitor lizards you see in Africa, Southern Africa, the rock monitors. In Australia, you see the largest lizard there is the Parenti. But this absolutely, completely swamps the size of those large lizards that you get in Australia. This gets up to 80 kilograms in weight and you can see how robust they are. Here locally, they would be known as land crocodiles. Now the other unique thing about Komodo dragons or actually monitor lizards is that they're actually venomous. So they have venom glands and unlike snakes, they're not hypodermic teeth, but actually out of those venom glands, it comes through to the saliva and that gets injected into the prey as they bite down into the flesh. Wow, well, there you go, tongue's flicking in and out. He's starting to move for us, brilliant. Whoa, okay, here we go. You can see that big body and the way they're able to lift with those very strong legs and four legs lift that body, but they're not actually that quick generally because they don't want to expend that energy. But when there's a prey item that they want to lunge out at, they have a very short burst of energy which they can run at 20 kilometers an hour. And that's enough in their ambush position to take down their prey. It's really in insane to think like this lizard here has lived on this planet for millions of years, almost unchanged. And only a hundred years ago was actually discovered by science. Remarkable. This really is one of the most iconic animals on the planet. There's nothing else quite like it. It's like one of the last mega, mega fauna animals on the planet. It's unusual that you get these giants living in the world. Most of them went extinct between 10,000 and 50,000 years ago. So this is one of the giants remaining on the planet and we're lucky enough that we can see them out in the wild here in Komodo National Park. One of the most prehistoric animals on our planet. We just got an amazing close encounter with them, learned about how they live among people here in Komodo National Park and how they are out on this island living absolutely wild and free, very well protected because of all the rangers that live here. Incredible to see them up close like this. I'm gonna say happy hunting to you and Komodo dragons. Yes. I went back a week later to get the camera trap around the cave and here's some of the footage.